All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Comic Book Radio. This is a sub-series uh, called Hosting the Hosts. And what I mean by that is that on this series, I interview various people who have their own channels or social media or whatever it may be, and they also help promote other people, their works, creations, whatever it may be. Uh, this is the second episode. The uh, first episode we had Statistical Zero, and this episode, we have Jason at Sci-Fi for Me. So without further ado, Jason. What's up, Jason? Hope you're doing well. Look at you in the back cave fun. over there. Yes, coming to you from Mission Control, deep beneath World Headquarters. How's everybody doing? Good hey. to be here. Thanks for having me. I imagine that you, you only exist there in front of many screens at all the time. You know, you're just monitoring the entire world's events. Yeah, this is this is my setup all all the time. I'm looking at oh, six thousand different things all at once, and I was like, "Where do where do I go next?" Squirrel, squirrel. Yeah, I got, I got one monitor, man. I don't even know how you do that. Uh, people that have two or three, I'm like, but you've got a whole setup. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, well, and part of this is an artifact from the fact that I'm in media production. So I've, I've been doing, you know, I started in radio back in 1988, and I've just accumulated various different pieces of equipment over the years in my production side of things. And so that now has all of this stuff that I can use for this. So it's, it, it's, it's a happy set of circumstances. Good grief. Wow. Well, it's, it's an impressive display. Um, yeah, Jaded One says, like, the Batcave supercomputer. <laughs> Do you have everything, uh, I imagine it to be like the Adam West show, where you have everything labeled, with, like, little, uh, little Dymo labels here and there? Well, I have it, not, I don't have the monitors labeled. I have, I have everything laid out, because I use OBS for all of my broadcasts. And so I have all of the monitors and everything laid out here and labeled a specific way on the control panel but i haven't i haven't gone so far as to label each monitor yet mm -hmm. <laughs> but i do have a little diagram on my mouse pad because i i use a wacom pen tablet so i have a little diagram up here to divide uh divide the space on which where where the where the mouse goes because the mouse goes across all these five and i have to make sure oh, wow. where, where is it where is it so yeah, it's a lot all right. Of fun. Well, well, I don't, I don't envy uh, your display there uh, that much. Then, <laughs> um, all right. So, for those that don't know, Jason is the guy running a Sci-Fi for Me uh, TV, right? Sci-Fi for Me TV takes you right to where you got to be, right on the that's, YouTube and everything. That'll go to the YouTube channel. We're also on Odyssey and Rumble and Twitch. Wow. Um, so, I guess let's start at the beginning because I really want to pick your brain in terms of, of what got you inspired to, to do this. Why do you do this? What do you enjoy about it? Um, what have you learned with your experiences? Um, but we'll start at the beginning. Uh, okay. So so what inspired you to, to get all of this kind of stuff going? Well, it started in 2009 uh, when the Sci-Fi Channel decided to change their brand. It was February of 2009. A lot of people did not take to the notion of Sci-Fi being the new brand for the sci-fi channel a lot of people thought that it was a another move away from the core audience of science fiction fans we've already had the wrestling and we had all these reality shows and why can't we just have a science fiction channel and this is back before netflix before streaming i mean netflix was still doing dvds in the mail right no streaming no rental you know none of that stuff online video was just becoming a thing youtube was out there but there really wasn't anything else and I was like, well, what if somebody else came up with another sci-fi channel type of thing and it wouldn't have to be cable? Why couldn't it be something online? And people were like, well, I'd watch it. So the original idea all the way back in 2009 was a combination of the dot-com magazine newspaper type thing where we'd have the news articles and reviews and then we'd have... Uh, a television station and we'd have a radio station and we'd have a library where we take a bunch of public domain stuff and reissue new books in in our brand and all of these different things and very quickly 
I realized that you can't really do that very well without money. <laughs> so, so for the longest time, the dot com just sat there as a blog, and it was just me in the basement, and I'd just write the blog, and I'd. I worked to get on a number of different media lists so we can start getting review copies of different things, books and movies and and such. And it just started to、uh, grow from there. We got on YouTube in 2012 and started doing recaps of Teen Wolf. And,、uh, and then it's just very slowly, incrementally grown over the years. We've had a number of different people that were contributors at various different points. It's all volunteer staff. Uh, except for the misses, she's kind of obligated because the ring on her finger. But、um, but yeah, it's just been one did, of those. Did she agree to that before, before or after? She actually jumped right <laughs> in、uh, when we first met and started dating. It was just before WorldCon was here in Kansas City in 2016,、oh. and、nice. she do- she dove right in. She's like, "Yeah, let's do it." I'm because Chase. She actually followed George R. R. Martin when he came out of the bathroom to get a picture with him, and <laughs> forgot to <laughs> forgot to ask him for an interview.、Uh, but that was the only WorldCon be- since any of them. It's the only WorldCon where we have had a live broadcast from the World Science Fiction Convention. We were out there all five days, and it was something that they never. Figured to do, they're like, you want to do what? It's like we want to be out there with our cameras and broadcast from the event. I mean, this is WorldCon. This is the Hugo Awards. Yeah, they keep them. That's、deal. a great idea. I've always wondered why every convention doesn't just do that. You know, well, have a have a street team more or less. Yeah, pan- pandemic pandemic kind of got a lot of conventions into that mode where、mm. we have to stream or we die. And、uh, there are a number of events that are trying to now figure out the hybrid model, where yes, we're back in the convention centers and we're back in the hotels and the ballrooms and the whatnot, but they're still trying to figure out how to do a streaming component of that. And truth be told, I had not, I have not been very motivated to get out and do anything at conventions lately, just because. Oh yeah, same people, here. But I, I. Recognize that there is a need for us to get back out there and do stuff, but、uh, you know we're going to have to we're going to have to figure out the best way to do it. I would like to do it with sponsors to help pay for it, but you know that's one of those things. Just you know, as as we get bigger, <clears throat> then eventually at some point we'll have the audience that will justify somebody spending money to sponsor our programs. Yeah, very true. Very true. Uh, all right, so you're doing a lot of different things.、Uh, obviously, you're covering a lot of different topics within the realm of sci-fi, and sci-fi is such a broad topic as it is.、Um, now, what what made you want to start having other creators and and people just within the the field of of sci-fi, comic books, etc.? Um, on your show to do interviews, to, instead of just doing reviews or just discussing their stuff without them face to face, is that something that you, you felt well, like it'd be great to get to know these people? Or yeah, I mean,、uh, our channel, the way the way that I have have d- designed the brand, if you will, we're news and opinion, and so you know we do a little bit more straight news. With our Saturday morning show, and most of the other channels are all just commentary, and here's what I think off the cuff and reaction videos and that kind of thing. And I figured, as part of our news component, our our, our general information part, see, because I'm old fashioned, I'm I'm network television when you had three channels on the TV and you had to get up to turn the dial. You know, that's that's how far back I go. And so I'm I'm a traditionalist, and when I'm looking at this kind of thing, you know, there's there's a public interest component, and I thought, well, this is a way that we could do interviews with authors and actors and directors, and writers and comic book creators and producers and whoever else. And so we have a couple of different things. So Saturday morning, Good Morning Multiverse is our news program. I try to include at least at least one interview segment there. And it's a good place where I can do a little twelve, fifteen minute segment with a comic book creator who's, you know, you're crowdfunding a book, and let's let's talk about it, see what it is, how'd you get started, and all that. And then we have one hour conversations on live from the bunker. So if we do extended 
uh, topics. You've been on the program a couple of times to talk about what you're doing over there at Alterna. And that gives us an opportunity to get more in depth. And that one's Monday through Friday. Uh, yeah, and Friday, I, I like that Friday one better. Open line Friday. There's no way I could make a Saturday morning. Yeah. Well, I get we, to bed at like four to five in the morning. Yeah. No, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm usually up about seven thirty, eight o'clock and I go to bed about one thirty-two. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 I'm up about, I'd say, I don't know. I'm up about nine o'clock. Um, I'm in bed about five. But it's still, I'm not, I'm not intelligible. I'm not going on the air at like ten, even eleven. Sometimes, I'm like, no, no, I need, I need. Yeah. Noon, noon, I can be uh, alive and awake to the world. Uh, sci-fi for me. Uh, this is a question for you, I suppose. Uh, this is who is this guy you hanging out with, Jason? <laughs> this is awesome. Um, I Do just... you know Michael? I just got this invite. Yeah, Michael. Michael is a frequent uh, a frequent participant in the chat on our live programs. He's uh, he's one oh, of our regulars. Fantastic. Hey, Michael. Welcome. I see. Uh, I see critical blast in the chat there as well. He's uh, yeah, yeah. He and I actually uh, co-produce and co-host a show. We got to get another one up on the air at some point because we simulcast to our both channels. It's called Blast from the Bunker, and it's a little bit more. Uh, cryptid, UFO, supernatural topics where oh, awesome. we, we both kind of tag team interview our our guest and talk about you know some something that's not necessarily in the science fiction wheelhouse. It's more in the you know George Nori overnight. You know, yeah, that sounds like my kind of thing. Stuff. I got to yeah. get on that show. Yeah, yeah, especially we with King Cryptid. I, I've got a I've got a very uh, endless fascination with that subject <laughs> not just cryptids but everything everything sci-fi um is great but um to me that stuff is we're starting to take a, a step into the real world and into the realm of possibility even though it might seem impossible it's still very much in the realm of possibility and at least i'd love to think about all the different things that that, that have occurred all the different things that can occur what's real what's not real that discussion is is like i said it's endlessly fascinating to me uh but uh yeah it'd be great to get on that show Talk yeah, some and, King Cryptid with you. And yeah, we definitely do. I, mean, I made a note. I'll send, I'll send an email to, to RJ and we'll set it up. And uh, I see Gerald asking me a question in the chat about small town monsters. I have not, but I will make a note and I will check that out. Thank you. Awesome. Um, so, Jason, how much time do we have with you tonight? This way I know how to pace the show, too. I'm here uh, as long as you need me. Okay. All right. I, so, the I first. Cleared, I cleared my evening. So. Oh, wow. Man. I'm, I'm honored. Uh, so the first half hour, I'm going to talk to you, get to know you a little more. We got about maybe almost 20 minutes or so of that. And then the next half hour, I'm going to put an invite link into the chat. If you guys want to come on the show, if you have a question, comment for Jason, uh, please feel free to join the show and ask him live on air. Otherwise, we'll take your questions and comments and whatnot in the chat. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, but so we'll do that. We'll separate into a half hour and a half hour. So a total of an hour. Uh, all right. So uh, when you're doing these interviews with various creators, because this is what I want specifically for people out there to know that are uh, maybe a project creator, uh, a creative individual in general, someone who you're trying to do this version of a digital uh, tour. Mm -hmm. um, I want to point them to channels and, and people that I'm like, hey, go visit them, you know, go take a look at hosting the hosts, get to get get to know some of these people and see if you jive with any of them. And maybe you want to go and approach them to be on their show. Um, when you have people approaching you uh, to be on your show as an interviewer, uh, mm -hmm. what do you recommend? How should they approach you? Uh, where should they reach you? Um, what kind of topics do you want to discuss with them? All that kind of stuff. I don't want to send the wrong kinds of people your way in terms right. of subject matter or anything like that. Um, well, so yeah, we cover science fiction, fantasy, and horror on the broad scope. And so within that, uh, anything that's related to books, movies, television, comic books, video games, uh, role-playing games, board games, uh, any of that stuff. Because that falls in, into that umbrella of science fiction, fantasy, horror, anime, um, manga, 
pretty much any of that. So if you're a, if you're a creator, if you're somebody who's who's out there, because we get a lot of emails from people that said, "Hey, we've got this. I've got this book. I've got this uh, this comic book we're doing, and and this kind of thing." Um, generally, a press release is a good idea. If those of you who are not uh, used to doing that, there's a there's a website called pr prlog.org, I think. It's either a .com or .org, but I think it's a .org, where you can do a press release for free. You sign up for an account, and you can do, I think, two per month. And it's a good way to get some information out uh, as a press release that looks a little bit more legitimate, I guess. And, and if you want to just send an email and say, hey, I'm, I'm starting a crowdfunding project. Here's the book. Here's what it's about. Here's when it launches. Uh, all of the pertinent information about the project, and you know, if there's if there's samples, uh, if there's a review copy, I mean, if you've got a PDF, you want to do a review, we could do that. Um, I will say my review pile dates back to 2012, so I will I will be digging out of that pile until I'm probably dead. But I try to I try to get out and and get a bunch of reviews out as as quickly as i can i wear about 12 dozen hats here so mm, mm. i stay really busy with all of the stuff that never quite gets done so uh but yeah in anything like that where where you have just the basic nuts and bolts who what why where when about your project the launch date um contact information website you know, if there's a website besides the campaign, uh, social media links, any of that stuff, because what I'll do then is I'll go through and I'll look at all of the all of the stuff and figure, OK, this is this is something we can do on Saturday morning. Can we you you want to do this live or you want to pre-record it and then we'll set up a time. We'll dial them in through Zoom and we'll do the interview and feature the feature the project because uh, i can bring it up on a screen you know just like just like this i can bring up on screen here's the project while i'm talking to people and um and that way it gets it in front of more eyeballs now we don't have a huge audience yet but every little bit helps uh as a matter of fact i did a thing let me look real quick because a long while ago I did a uh, I did a topic. No, not that one. Hang Digging on. deep in the archives. I am because there I did a thing. I don't know, Mrs. If Mrs. Boss is still in the chat, uh, maybe she can help me find it. I did a I did an hour. Here we go. Yeah, I did. I did an hour on live from the bunker. A, a long while ago, uh, detailing out how to do media kits. I put it there in the chat. Oh, right wow. A media kit. Yeah. So media kits, yeah. marketing Mindy's tools, here. everything that you need uh, to have available front and center before you start talking to press. Um, and, and as soon as you decide that you're going to want to start doing a project, start gathering emails. Go to go to various different sites like you know, uh, you know, Clownfish, Collider. I mean, any of the sites that actually cover what kind of a project that you're doing. If you're doing a comic book, that's going to be Bleeding Cool, Bleeding Fool, uh, Critical Blast, um, Comics Beat, uh, mm. AICN. Or, um, uh, what's the other one? Um, makes me cringe a little to send people to bleeding cool well that's yeah i mean i'm just rolling <laughs> off the top of my head there's a couple yeah. of other really good ones first comics news com, uh comic book comic book.com i mean th find the ones that you think will fit your project and then go to the about section go to the go to the place where they're listing teams or they've got a contact page or something like that and just start collecting emails start collecting pathways to get the information to these people and then you know write your write your email put all of your information together and then just start blasting it out and and whatever kind of response you get 
Stay on top of that stuff. Track it. I sent this email to this person on this date. This was the response. Uh, it's a yes. It's a no. It's a maybe. Here's a date when I'm going to follow up because I didn't hear from them. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff that you you got to treat it like a business. Whether whether you're doing it for money or you're doing it just for fun, you still have to have a kind of a business approach to it so you can track it. Yeah, a, rel a relative professionalism. Yeah, to it. Yeah. Uh, so let's uh, let's let's dive d deeper now into some of the shows that you've done, uh, especially okay. some of the guests that you've had on. Um, have you had on any guests in particular where you really enjoyed your time? And then conversely, uh, you don't have to mention names on this one. Uh, but have you had any guests, uh, any stories uh, where you're like, oh, boy, that was a dumpster fire? <laughs> um. <laughs> I guess I could answer that second part first. Okay. Um, okay. So what was it a year ago, two years ago now? When was that? Uh, we did an interview with Ernie Gygax. I was going to say, yeah. If you don't mention that, I'm going to call you on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. A, we did. A, we did. Yeah. Yeah. We did that one. Uh, this was in June of 2021. This is two years ago now. And we did an interview with Ernie Gygax about the return of TSR. They were bringing back the old TSR brand. And the interview itself went fine. Yeah. It's an hour. I mean, we talked about all of this stuff. We talked about D&D &D and the beginnings of it and his dad and you know, all of the stuff that they were doing now and the museum. I mean, everything went great. And then this thing just starts blowing up. I was like, what in the world is going on here? And it turns out somebody had taken a particular timestamp where Ernie said something and they took it completely out of context and said, racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe, misogynist, whatever. Oh, the usual and playbook. this <laughs> thing just blew up. And I was like, holy crap, what happened? We broke the internet. We made it onto sites that I had never even heard of that were talking about RPGs. Yeah, I was seeing it and I was like, sci-fi for me, sci-fi for me. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I I don't know. I was trying I, to find the controversy too, because like you said, it was a really it was a good interview. It was a good conversation. There was nothing nothing at all stood out to me as, as uh particularly egregious. Yeah, it was it was about, know? I don't know, 15, 16 minutes in, and it was some some person took something personally and it's outrageous, <laughs> egregious, preposterous and put us on blast. And it got to the point where I honestly, the stuff that's going on with TSR now with all of the lawsuits and now they filed chapter seven bankruptcy and all this other stuff. I don't know if we had anything to do with that. And I'm like, I hope we didn't have anything to do with that, but it, that's where it started because as soon as this thing blew up, whoever was doing their social media started clapping back, which mm, they shouldn't yep. have done. And that person got yanked. They got somebody else in there, but the damage had already been done. And the stuff that they were going to do with Giant Lands, that got canceled, kaput, done. Giant Lands said, we're going to go do our own thing. We're not going to have anything to do with Mr. Lenassa or any of those guys. And this thing just completely fell apart. And then TSR went after WotC for the for the trademark. And then WotC is now suing TSR. I mean, this whole thing just turned into this giant thing and yeah like, and, and and i know you probably sit there and go oh man you could probably trace it back and we were patient zero but honestly if it wasn't yeah. you it was going to be somebody else that's just well, how this stuff goes it seems like they yeah. had a target on their back yeah well and i think part of it i i don't know how much of it was watsy shills in this whole thing making it bigger than it was mm -hmm. uh but the, the original reaction that it was the spark that lit the fire uh, was some transgender person who took something out of context personally and just started sharing a link in the timestamp. And here's this thing. I mean, we got to the point where we had to put, make the video private, you know, giant lands contacted me six months later that said, can you 
untag us? I was like, you're not tagged in anything. I've already taken, I've, I've taken everything off. They were still getting noise about wow. it. Wow. I'm like, I, I'll, I'll do what I can, but I don't, I don't have it. I, the, the video's gone. I mean, it's out, it's out, but it, I took it private for a long while because I just wanted everything to just stop. Wow. Wow. It was crazy. It was crazy. Now, the fact that the video has got something close to yeah, I agree, 16, Michael. 17,000 views, I figured we pick up a few more subscribers than we did. <laughs> but, you know, I'm like, okay. I'm just glad we got past it. Because I figured as soon as well, they I hate for PSR, I, hate I figured they'd come after us. <laughs> so. and, and that didn't happen. So I'm glad it didn't happen. Yeah. Well, again, I, I thought that it was... I thought it was fine. Um, you could take yeah. everything out of context if you want, yeah. and I mean, I'm 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 perfectly aware of how <laughs> yeah. that occurs. Um, yeah. You know, to the point that, but it, you know, once you go through enough of it, it's like, yeah, go ahead, whatever, I don't care. You yeah. know, it becomes that way. But there are there are certain things that play out with certain businesses and certain people where they don't uh, they don't know how to recover from that. Maybe they don't they're not able to. I mean, the thing you have to do about it, all of that stuff and they did it wrong was like what you said when they started clapping back when they started kind of back uh pedaling a bit when they kind of started crapping on uh, ernie um all that kind of stuff that started occurring yeah. that was when the time that they had to fortify and and and, and right. you know steel man their position well, on, on where they were at and when they got kicked out of gary con of all things i mean this is this is gary's son ernie yeah and, and he's this new tsr thing and and when they got ousted from gary con and then gen con and i mean this whole thing just went completely sideways and i thought okay we're just going to keep our heads down i'm not going to say anything to anybody about nothing and let it go and see what happens and if we get any kind of spillover then we'll deal with it but you know fortunately we were able to avoid it i don't i you know my lips to God's ears would never have that kind of a situation, but you know, yeah. All right. So is what it is. So, uh, in terms of a really good scenario, <laughs> something, oh, something well, that didn't bring you as much stress or anything like that. Uh, can you think of, of, of one? Um, well, I can think of more than one really. I mean, good. most, most of the stuff that we do, we generally have good results. I mean, I've been able to talk to Joe Haldeman, I've talked to Cat Rambo. I've talked to uh, Alan Dean Foster. I've talked to uh, Tom Kane. Tom uh, Tom Kane, actually, you know, the voice of Yoda. He's he's been the narrator for the Oscars, and you know, all of that. He's retired now because he had a stroke a couple of years ago. But he does all of our voicers. He did he did all of our all, all of our little you know promos. And you're watching Sci Fi for Me TV. That's all Tom. Wow. And we've been able to have him on as a guest, and we've talked to a number of star trek authors you know we've had the cast of the orville you know we were able to interview some of them there have been some really good opportunities we got a chance to talk to tom sizemore about a movie that he was doing so we talked to him um, six months ago i think eight months ago so you know it's 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 fun to do those, to have those conversations because there are a lot there there's a lot of free form back and forth. I I have an idea of some different things that I'm going to ask because I do my homework and I do my research and stuff. And we've got a certain thing that they have to, you know, they wanted to promote. But I'll generally kind of go in and out and in and out and do, you know, we'll talk about the thing you want to talk about, but I also want to ask you about this other thing. And it's, it's kind of a, I, I usually describe it if I'm pitching it to somebody and doing an invitation, I'll usually pitch live from the bunker as a combination of Larry King live and inside the actor's studio with a science fiction pastiche on top of it, you know, so you've got that filter from genre, uh, but stylistically content wise, the kind of a format it is, it's generally a one, just a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And there's no agenda, there's no gotchas, you know, and, and and I have frequently said that that show is much better when I have a guest than it is when it's just me. Because I can rant for an hour, an hour and a half, but it, it's better when I have somebody else to talk to. So. Man, oh man. Well, I'm glad you had those good experiences, and, and even though you had that, um, 
that very stressful one with, yeah. with the Ernie situation. Those seem to be relatively few and far between. I, I can't remember a situation where you've had that before or after. Yeah, uh, that that's pretty much the only one where things had just got really hinky. So I, yeah. we've been we've been very fortunate. Man, oh man. All right, so we're coming up to the halfway point of the show right now. Uh, if you've just joined us, thank you for joining. This is Comic Book Radio. This is the series hosting the hosts, episode two. We're here with Jason at Sci-Fi for Me. I'm your host, Peter Samedi. We'll be right back. We're going to be just showing a, uh, a trailer or two. And uh, like I said, stick with us, and we'll be back in a, a minute or so. See you then. Ghost. I'm a Tressian. Huh? You're not human? You're back with uh, Comic Book Radio here. Thank you guys for sticking with us. I'm your host, Peter Simetti. Uh, we're here with Jason at Sci-Fi for Me. And uh, we're talking about his channel, uh, the fact that he's got interviews on it. He's got his own guests. He's got a lot of different things going on at that channel, Sci-Fi related. You guys, if you haven't checked it out yet, make sure to stop by and subscribe. The link to subscribe to that channel is in the, the YouTube description here to this show. Uh, now, so one, one quick thing on on those spots that you just just ran yeah that, that second one for ghost it's an excellent spot but nowhere in there does it say the title of the book yeah right i i there's a couple of them that are so they're they're so embroiled in being a trailer for the book um they're not necessarily tailored for advertising yet um, we had a couple people uh, last night talk about how there needs to be more of a voiceover too for some of them, to, even to just to mention the title and and where to find it. Uh, and I agree, but yeah, a lot of these these were not set up as advertising. Um, right. But uh, well, and I, we've talked about here uh, offering our production services because I've I've been in media for thirty oh, yeah? years, and so you know people are starting to see some of the spots that we run for our own stuff our own promos and like you should be doing this for for some of the other guys and so we thought about it um trying to figure out how that you know what that would look like and how we would go about doing that just providing some production for uh for you know some of these campaigns especially if they don't have any experience putting videos together because there are certain things that you need to have in a trailer for your campaign whether it's a game or a comic book or a, or a, a movie or whatever, and you know, we're we're noodling on that at this point, and we'll mm. we'll probably put something out here pretty soon if if we decide to do something on that. Well, that would be great. Um, it's a trap productions. Thank you so much for that five dollar super chat. Says uh, that Jason guy is all right, and Alterna is cool. Thank I you. It's a that. trap. Appreciate Alexander that. is a frequent contributor on our uh, show called The Ranker Pit which is our Star Wars discussion show, oh, uh, wow. which is on every other every other Thursday. So not tonight, but next Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, we will have another one. We're going through season two of uh, the Star Wars Visions uh, animation series right now. And he's, he's one of the guys that's uh, in that conversation. Oh, very nice. It was good to have him. He's a smart guy. 
That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, before I ask uh, you and answer a couple more questions in the chat, um, I'm going to put the link here for you guys. If you do want to join the show, feel free. If you've got questions or comments for Jason, uh, please join us live on air and, uh, and ask him yourself. So there's the link for you guys. You can hop on board. We got about a half hour or so more. Uh, JR asks, how much would a promo cost? Do you, do you even know what to say at, at this point about that? I don't because my normal rates for production of a 30 second TV commercial uh, would be kind of beyond the scope of resources for a lot of these people. So I'm, I'm thinking, you know, something very basic, I don't know, 50 to hundred bucks maybe, but I haven't, I haven't put any math to it. Uh, so I don't want to, you know, lay out a firm quote. Usually I will quote per project for clients that come in and say, Hey, I want to do a TV commercial. And depending on how complex it is, you know, if it's just shoot some video, throw it together, throw a graphic at the end, you know, that's that's a lot easier than doing multiple layers and animations and flying this and screen mm. grab that and green screen and CG and da da da. So it it depends on the project. Yeah, there's there's some of these trailers that look great, but I feel like they're almost too much like a motion comic i'll just speak to the comic book ones they're almost too much like a motion comic and not enough like a trailer of letting you know yep. uh who's who what's what right um and jaded one mentions that too says too many trailers don't tell you the characters villains or conflict and that's kind of across the board nowadays yeah um i missed a day uh, and i know it became a cliche and 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 it got parodied to death but the whole like in a world where this guy's <laughs> doing this thing right <laughs> <laughs> you well, know, you have yeah, to at have, least I was like, all right, yeah, I know what's going yeah. on now. You have to have the hook, you know, e even if it's just, you know, whether it's a trailer, it's a TV commercial, it's a radio commercial, you in that first three seconds, first two to three seconds, you have to have something that grabs them. It has, you have to have a hook for the attention. Yeah. So you have them long enough that you can get into that next five seconds with the really important stuff this is what you need to know and you know take them in through the rest of it and sometimes that's you're establishing a need and then you're providing this product to satisfy the need uh with a comic book it's going to be a little bit different but you're selling what's in the book you know it's got action it's got it's got dragons it's got monsters it's got boobs it's got sword play it's got wizards i mean whatever that has to be, you know, that's your hook. And you've got to get people involved. But yes, you also have to get into the nitty gritty details of, <coughs> excuse me, of what it actually is. You know, what's the title of the book? Where can I find it? You know, how much is it going to cost? You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's very important. Yeah. A admittedly, I haven't done a trailer on a campaign in about two years. And a big reason for that is I found I stopped clicking on trailers because I didn't learn anything from them. <laughs> So yeah. I was like, maybe people are stopping to click well, on know, trailers maybe, in general. Maybe, maybe we need to start making trailers for books. But maybe That's maybe I'll make a trailer for the next King Cryptid campaign. I've got a good uh, amount written that I could just read like yeah. two paragraphs about uh, the character, a little bit of backstory, well, and set much, it up. As much chatter as I've been seeing about that book and, and all of the positive feedback that I'm seeing online about it, you, you have something there that I think is definitely going to be uh something that it, it it's going to it's going to catch a lot of people's attention it's going to catch fire i think well, and thank a, you, man. a trailer a trailer would would help with that yeah because yeah. if you have a 30 second piece or even if you have a 15 second piece if you have the resources and again this goes back to money manpower and time and money gets you the other two but you can take that 30 second spot you can take that 15 second spot and you can make it a pre-roll through Google, Google AdSense, or you could, you know, boost the video over on, you know, Twitter or Facebook or whatever. If you, if you have the money that you can spend on that, you can actually use that as an ad to market your campaign in places where maybe you might not otherwise have a presence. Because Google, Google ads and Facebook ads and all those things, you can actually sit there and say, okay, I want this region and people who are interested in comic books and people who are interested in science fiction and whatever. And you determine all of your criteria for who sees that ad. 
So mm-hmm. you, can, you can do that depending on how much money you have to spend if you have it to spend. That's the other that's the other hang up on that. Yeah, yeah, it always is. Yeah. Um, I mean, I definitely have the capability to, to put something normal <laughs> together. Nothing that's going to be overly impressive. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of the I think I feel like that's my aesthetic anyway in terms of it's it's very it's bare bones of get right to the heart of what it's about and that's what matters the story matters the art matters the character matters i don't need any like flashy stuff i don't need any like death metal going on um but it's i mean i love these trailers that people put out there but i feel like that's that's not me you know but i think the more that we see uh these kinds of trailers where they feel like these big kick-ass kind of things. I think the more people get in the mindset of that's how my trailer should look too. Yeah. Uh, but I, I like seeing the the plethora of variety of how people approach these things. I really like uh, Mike Barron's trailer. He's got a really great voiceover for that. Um, it it has a nice mix of polish and professionalism, and it, it looks great. But it's also telling you the story and the characters and the premise. Yeah. Um, I think that one came out great. What is well, that? It's for and, Bronze Star. Yeah, and you want your trailer or your your spot, your video, whatever whatever you're using to market your stuff. It all has to be consistent with the actual book. Um, so you know, don't don't give me a sword and sorcery trailer if your book is robots and lasers. Yeah, you know, is it? Yet yeah, the tone has to be consistent throughout. Yeah, you know, yeah. You pick you pick one message, and that's everything in your marketing is that one thing and it and it dials back into what your story is so it's almost a piece of your story in terms of the aesthetic the visuals the tone you know oh, the yeah. pace, all of all of that stuff how fast it's cut all it should all of absolutely be an extension absolutely yes, absolutely it should yeah yep. um so there's the link again for you guys if you want to join tonight you got a question or comment talk right to jason uh, he's over here at Sci-Fi for me, and um, we're talking tonight about his channel, about a, a bunch of different things. But this is the second half of the interview, so we only got about maybe 20 minutes or so left. So if you do want to join the show, uh, get on over here and and don't wait too long. Do you All still right, so, have time? do you have do you still have timey Tim? Yes, I do. Okay. All yes, right. I do. Yeah, he's right. He's right over here. I just hadn't seen him in a while. So. Yeah, he's right over here. <laughs> <laughs> he gets mad every now and then. I don't use him as much as I used to. Yeah. He misses he misses making people uh, squirm in fear and terror, you know, on open mic Monday and and then open mic Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, he's not he's not using that capacity anymore. So every now and then I have to I have to tell him he's still intimidating. He's still scary. <laughs> well, we need to get we need to get you back on to talk about the new distribution stuff that you guys are getting that that y'all are doing. Y'all just set up an online shop. Uh, mm, yes and no yes yeah. and no so so comic book newsstand is kind yeah. of an evolution of what happened from alternate distribution and alternate distribution was originally meant to be and i don't want to turn this into an interview about me <laughs> but um it, alternate distribution was originally meant to be something for independence where we would distribute to retail stores alternate distribution still may very well happen one day yeah. um in terms of getting product in one place and, and talking to independent creators out there that have books that are ready to go and they can ship like maybe 10 to me and have sales through consignment and that kind of thing um and as we sell out i order another 10 and so on and so forth uh but that's a a, an idea that kind of died right as the covid pandemic hit and that was the last thing that a lot of people wanted to even entertain was that kind of idea um it was difficult enough for us in terms of our retail distribution it's it's dropped drastically well Um, in our in our stuff when when we because we took a break in 2018 i i was burned out i was done i was ready it was because we were not growing we weren't catching we you know we hadn't caught any any attention as far as you know any any kind of new subscribers or anything like that and I was just okay. I'm just we're just doing too much. We got to do something else. And then we came back in 2019, and things were going pretty well. We were on a regular schedule. We had a number of shows that were in regular, regular all you know, putting them out day, you know, week to week. And we were just gonna because we had done the WorldCon thing, we did Planet Comic Con, we had done a couple of other conventions where people were saying, "Is this your new model?" And we're like. Heck yeah, we'd like to do this. You know, let's do it because Sci-Fi Wire was doing it at some of the Read Pop 
Ives, you know, the, the, the sci-fi stage at some of these conventions, but they weren't out in the rest of the convention. And I thought this is an opportunity for us to go out to maybe even some of the smaller conventions and start broadcasting live and we could do all of this stuff. It builds up an audience for us, but it also puts these events on the map online, you know, and this is before COVID, this is before everybody was doing an mm -hmm. online event. I've always been ahead of the curve. And <laughs> then pandemic hit. March, March 15th, 2020, I was working for ESPN at the Big 12 conference the 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 champion the basketball championships were going on here in Kansas City and middle of the day everything just stopped yeah it was like the world was like that yeah and that's, and why, we're like, and that's a, what just yeah. happened yeah and, and that's we, a whole and we never came back from that so that's a whole conversation for another day as far as yeah. I always hear from people oh no there's no way that they can all have control over everything and everyone <laughs> um you know there's, there's legislation Oh, and there's th there's you know all kinds of different processes that would have to occur for for all of these things to to happen and, yeah the only okay. thing the only thing that you need in order for all of it to happen is compliance exactly and they got it yep that's all I'll say. yeah yeah it was a perfect uh perfect scenario but um i'm gonna try to i'm gonna try not to enter into conspiracy cover-up land um all right See, so and that's, uh and that's the other thing because when i when i do my rant if, if i'm just my myself i have to be really careful about that because our brand has been no politics no corporate you know we're, we don't have any kind of big corporate overlords or anything like that we're not in any studios pockets but i also want to avoid the the politics of the thing because there are a lot of youtube channels out there that dive right into that stuff with politics and pop culture and entertainment all mixed in and i'm trying to not do, do that so i have to be really careful sometimes not to get it's, a it's very difficult nowadays yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's more tough. than ever it's tough uh, because it's so immersed into into everything oh, it, is. it is well breitbart was um, right you know politics is downstream from culture and and somebody i somebody made the point that culture is downstream from economics you know the economy oh well, everything it's all connected on and it's all it's all connected. yeah culture right now that's where the battleground is and and it's everywhere yeah. it's in everything it's video games it's comic books it's movies tvs publishing everything. yeah every aspect of everything is connected it all just depends it's, it's like an abacus in terms of if you're just moving something along next to something else a little bit yeah. closer and it's just you're, you're, you're doing that with various different things and then you know they they add up um lion mill says uh just got here does jason talk about sci-fi or does he make sci-fi stories uh, his whole channel is dedicated to sci-fi and and all things yeah. related yeah we talk science um, fiction fantasy and horror I actually have written a science fiction book, um, and it's available on Amazon. It was a self-published thing. And I have made some short films. I made a feature film, but it's a romantic comedy, so it doesn't count. Um, it's kind of sci-fi. Yeah, <laughs> kind of, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, we, we, cover, we cover the genre with news and opinion programming uh interviews and and that kind of thing um at one point we did talk about doing original radio theater uh i don't know some some people might remember when leonard nimoy and john delancey put together this group called alien voices it was on the sci-fi oh yeah show. yeah and they did staged readings as if you're in the radio station watching the production and they had all of the sound effects live on stage and the music live on stage and the actors are standing there holding their scripts and they're doing the cask of Amontillado and that kind of thing. And I had talked to John Delancey at one point and asked him, I said, why, why, why did it stop? Because it stopped long before Leonard Nimoy died. And Delancey said it got to the point where I was selling DVDs too much. I was I was a salesman and all I want to do is just act. I just want to perform. I don't want to be the seller. I don't want to be I don't want to be the sales guy. And I asked myself, okay, what if somebody paid a licensing fee and brought alien voices back and handled all of that other stuff? And oh, you guys just did the stuff. He said, I would love for somebody to do that. And I'm thinking, sign me up. But again, money. But we had talked about because there are there are so many things that are out there in the public domain. 
you go to Project Gutenberg, you know, the the Wizard of Oz is in the public domain. There's there's all sorts of you know H.G. Wells and and Edgar Allan Poe. All of this stuff is in the public domain. And we had talked at one point about taking that stuff and adapting it into original radio theater productions. Oh, that'd be cool. And I still would love to do that and and get on stage and do the readings and do the whole live production and everything. I've done a little bit of that. It's a lot of fun. But it's it's a manpower thing more than it is anything else. You know, because yeah. you got to have somebody write the scripts and then you got to find the cast and you got to find the sound effects people and music people and find a find a facility and you know, all of this. There's a lot of just legit- get one person for sound effects and, you know, like a Michael yeah. Winslow thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks like we've got somebody on here. Uh, right. We got Michael Gonzalez. What's hey, up, Michael? Michael? What's your, oh, uh, there. how are you doing tonight? What's your question or comment for Jason at Sci-Fi? Um, well, I already know the, I already know the answers. So these are kind of questions as a prod to, to remind Jason. Oh, okay. Uh, and all right. uh, Stop yeah, yeah. Um, all right. The, for the ones that are, um, you're talking about the design aspects of your channel, but you didn't, um, uh, uh, mention so much, so many other things about content. Uh, one of the things. What kind of, what kind of show is uh, sci-fi me uh, sci-fi for me TV? Is it um, is it uh, a goof is it a goof for laugh for minute, or um, is it a little more sedate? Is it a, is it a, fa is, it a fa is it a family friendly show, or is it like Friday like Friday Night Tights where everyone's just <laughs> yeah, no, not not yeah. like Friday Night Tights. We're PG thirteen generally. Um, okay. We have yeah. we have right now. On our lineup, we have seven shows that are in production. Uh, we have Live from the Bunker with the H2O podcast. We have Good Morning Multiverse, Salacious Crumbs, which is our Star Wars news program, Triple Bites, which is Star Trek news, um, Ranker Pit, Vault of the Killer Bees, which is a uh, you know the B movie drive-in theater schlock movie stuff. Um, what's that? That's that's seven. Yeah, I think that's that's all of them. And then we have about a half a dozen that are on the back burner on hiatus that I would love to bring back, uh, but we haven't been able to yet. Okay. Great question, Michael. So, and and one other question: How um, about the again about the content of your show? Um, it's as I said, I'm the court jester, so I ask needling, uh, <laughs> to, but needling questions. But the thing is, they are they are asked of from love. So, my uh, need, my needling question is so the other aspect well, how is your show how does your show address or deal with politics not necessarily what bent you are but how is is all you're talking about politics or is uh or does politics sometimes come into your discussions because they necessarily must with the uh forms of entertainment we have these days well it it's it's not a primary focus um <clears throat> it does occasionally come up every now and again, depending on what our, our topic is and who we're talking with in terms of guests. But for the most part, we tend to avoid uh, in-depth, you know, getting getting in the weeds in terms of political discussions. And, and any politics that do creep in are generally within the framework of we're talking about Star Wars. We're talking about Lucasfilm. We're talking about Disney versus, you know, the state of Florida, you know, those kind of things. And I, I still try to stay. I'm right. I'm, I'm, I'm right of center, but I try to stay a little bit more neutral than I otherwise would if it were just me and I cut loose because I have to, I have to keep in mind that sci-fi for me tv or sci-fi for me as a brand is not just me if it were just me i just you know just let loose and go out go all out but there's a group here and we've all got different things that we believe in different ways that we vote you know there's different political ideologies and faith and and orientation all, all this stuff we're all uh, you know uh, this group of disparate people who don't always agree on everything and if i were to sit there and say the brand believes x then mm -hmm. there's going to be people on the staff who don't agree with that 
And that right. has become a point of contention with some people in the past. They're like, did you actually say this? So, 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 so. I was like, well, yeah, well, I can't work with you anymore. I'm done. Okay. You know, and we've gone through probably 90, 95 different volunteers over the past 14 years. And, you know, a lot of that is just, you know, work has become a thing. Family becomes a thing. I don't have time to do it now. I don't have any interest to do it now. You know, all, all of these different reasons why they come and go. It's a revolving door. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've never, I have to remember, I don't think I've ever kicked anybody out. Okay. And I, and I um, will, and will never tell anybody, you can't work here because you voted for X and so person. You know, I, I, I just don't believe in that kind of, that, that kind of approach. It's dumb. And I see the comics industry, especially imploding over that very thing. I'm like, Oh yeah, well, a variety of industries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then, then I, w I was going to ask one last question uh, for for uh, Pete here. Sure, Hi, Pete. Hey. Okay. So, um, so the thing is, I saw that it's episode. I see that you're like episode two, and like, a, and as how's it going? I said I follow. I followed. I follow Jason around, but uh, I don't know what are you. What are you about? <laughs> What am I about? Oh, man. We don't have enough time for that. We only have three more minutes on the show tonight. Um, right. Well, I'm, I'm founder and publisher of Alterna Comics. This is our 17th year. And this is just my YouTube channel. We've got an Alterna channel as well. But uh, I guess what you could summarize me, my interests revolve around, obviously, comic books. That's a really big part of my life. But the paranormal, the unknown, the unexplained, cryptids, aliens, etc. I love hockey okay. as well. You know, it all kind of goes together. So then what's tonight? <laughs> and, so, uh, then, so then what are you doing with uh, the shows about hosts? Well, like I said, when we started off, this is mostly just to. Uh, oh, yeah. This is mostly just to, to highlight people out there that are also helping to promote other people and their projects and works as well. Because there's also I'm finding uh, that there's there's a ton of people that even though they maybe have their own channels, um, they're not necessarily maybe sometimes getting invited to, to talk on other channels because people usually go, oh, well, you've got a channel. I don't necessarily need to ever ask this person to be on mine. Uh, but I've never felt comfortable with being a person who uh, invites myself over, right? So I view this as this is my house. It's okay. odd if, if you were to invite yourself over to my house. It's different if I invite you. But you wouldn't go out to somebody, you know, uh, talk to them for two minutes and say, hey, can I come over to dinner tonight? You know, it's a little strange. You know, it's one thing if they invite you. So I always mm -hmm. tell people, you know, uh, don't necessarily invite yourself over, but build an organic kind of relationship of, of getting to know that person, the channel, uh, the stuff they talk about, the stuff that they uh, might uh, be interested in talking with you about. And then you can grow in that sense and you'll be surprised. Most likely, maybe they'll invite you or you can actually invite them. Um, so I'm hoping that this kind of channel breaks the ice, this kind of uh, interview series breaks the ice for people, because this this might be the second episode of this show, but this, it's not my my second episode of, of, of doing anything like this, technically. Um, okay. But yeah, yeah exactly. so yeah, that's why I really want people to, to, to get to know uh, these individuals that are going to be on. There's going to be a lot more people, too, on here. Peter, I should okay. I should point out because I've seen this. I've seen this discussion on on Twitter, especially. Um, if you have a channel or if you've got a if you've got a creator, uh, you know, you've got a book or you've got a campaign, you got something that you're doing. Nobody is obligated to have you on as a guest. So, you know, you put your stuff out there and you say, hey, this is the thing. Are you interested in having us on now? It, the polite thing is. Good luck with the campaign. This is really not in our wheelhouse. You know, this is romance. We do sci fi. You know, I appreciate you letting us know, you know, but this is not, this is not for us. But I've seen people get so bent out of shape because they didn't get invited to a, to a, a particular person's channel. Just, yeah, I, I always you know, recommend don't, saying, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. And not to, not to interrupt you well, there, but me. I always recommend yeah, telling questions. people, oh, what was that? I said, thank you for thank you for letting me ask the questions. Oh, yeah, no problem yeah. whatsoever. Um, I always recommend that if you are going to be someone who's more forthcoming with that, uh, give an easy out. 
Make it a no pressure situation. Let them know that, hey, I appreciate you even reading this message right now, let alone maybe responding to me. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if this isn't your kind of thing, no worries whatsoever. I love your show. Keep it up. You maybe one day we'll cross paths. Uh, be as professional and courteous about it as possible because you're going to want that courtesy extended to you one day uh, in the same circumstance as you continue to grow and grow and grow with whatever, whatever it might be. Uh, because there's nothing worse than than making someone feel like they absolutely have to do this. They don't know who you are. Um, they don't want to be rude to you. And most of the time, it's going to end up coming across to you then like they are being rude to you. And, and it's just there's, there's no reason for that. Um, so well, give people it, an easy out. Make it no pressure. Yeah. The publishing industry has an advantage there because if I'm if I'm going to submit a manuscript to a publishing house, say Tor or Ban or whatever, and I'm actually f sending them a physical copy of the manuscript. This is back before the days of the internet. One of the things that they'd always recommend is if you're sending a manuscript to an editor, especially if it's unsolicited, then you know you're going into the slush pile. There's no there's no reason to expect that they're going to read it, but if they do, include a postcard, self-addressed stamped postcard. That basically says, "Hey, I got it. I'm not interested. Thanks very much. I am interested. I'll get I'll get in touch or something like that." You can't do that online, and it's frustrating because if you send me an email, the only way that you know that I have seen it is if I respond to it. If I don't respond to it, maybe I got it. Maybe it went to spam. It's like maybe back in the day when you were not, kids, yeah. and you slip a note to the cute girl in class, and you say, yeah. "Do you like me? Yes or yeah. no? Circle yeah. it." <laughs> yeah, we need some some online way to do that, and and we don't have that yet. But yeah, so when you're going to approach someone again, be as courteous as possible. Let them know, uh, and hopefully you are genuinely interested in their show and you enjoy their show. Otherwise, why are you trying to be on it? Even though I know how it works, and sometimes people just are blanket submitting everywhere. Um, so give them an easy out. Let them know, hey, no pressure whatsoever. Either way, best of luck to you. And I'm still a fan. Uh, and there are and there are other there are some media outlets uh, that don't have YouTube channels. Uh, it, whether you know, they might have a Rumble channel, they might have Odyssey, or they may not have a video platform at all. They may just be an online dot com like in the olden days. You know, ICV two or or um, oh, what's the other the splintering. Now, some of them may have a video channel, but you're putting material out for coverage, whatever coverage that looks like mm -hmm. based on who it is that you're talking to. So that's why it's really important to have that media kit so you can have not just a video element where you're ready to get on camera and talk, but also have your press releases and your and your. Uh, your project description and your timeline. If you're doing a book, the campaign's going this time to this time. We're going to fulfill this time. This is how much money we're looking to do. Here are all the creative team. Have your creator bios. You got to have biographies of all of the creative team. Photos would be nice. Uh, you know, that. Well, also, don't. <laughs> Don't flood them with information too at the same time. Well, not, not every, <laughs> yeah, right. Not everything, but have there. I did one interview and I can't remember who it was, but yeah, your preliminary email. Sure. This is just an introductory handshake and here's who I am, but you can have a link to that media kit. Absolutely. And if I'm interested, I'm going to click on that and see here are all the photographs and here are sample pages and here's the cover art and here's the, the creator bios. Yeah, all this information is available just to click away. Even if you've got just a website, even if you've got just a YouTube, um, you know, whatever it may be, a link to your campaign, that kind of a thing, too. Um, it, again, you, you want to approach it in a way of understanding that this person is busy. They've got their schedule already mapped out and you are trying to just weasel your way in there. So you really want to be delicate with it and respectful. Um, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of people out there. And I don't know if you've got them. I definitely have gotten them over the years. Um, that are just kind of like a bull in a china shop, you know, and you're coming in and, and then it, it feels like, oh, goodness, you know, like it's the equivalent of like they shove you against the wall and they're like, you, me, channel, now. Fortunately, <laughs> you know? most of the people that get in touch with me are, P are PR agencies or they're, you know, the publicity departments of the studios and that kind of thing. So I don't get very much of that. 
Um, but one thing that they are in the habit of doing is repeat emails. You know, they'll send me a note and they say, "Hey, you know, uh, uh, Anderson Group PR is one of the one of the ones that sends me stuff all the time." And they'll have the press release. So and so is a multi-talented, award-winning, bada bada bada, and they've got this new book out, and we'd be happy to set up an interview. And if they don't get a response, sometimes if they do get a response, they'll they'll send maybe about a week and a half, two weeks later, they'll resend that. And say, hey, this is just a follow up, just to you know make sure we stay on the radar. It's just a little polite nudge, because sometimes I miss the first one, mm-hmm. and they'll say because I get I get gobs of emails, and I'll get a thing in there and says, hey, just following up, see if you got our first note. And I'm like, no, I didn't. Let me go see, and you know, and I'll and I'll find it. And if it's something I'm interested in, hey, thanks for the follow up. Yes, we're interested. Let's do this. So you you want that's why you have that tracking chart. I sent an email on this. I didn't get an answer. I'm going to resend the email with a little just general. Hey, just wanted to check in. I know you're busy. Get back with me when you can. Thanks very much for your time and get out. And and make sure that you can track all of that so you so you don't get lost in the soup. Yeah, really good advice. All right, so we got to wrap up the show. That's it for us tonight. Thank you so much, Jason, for joining me. Uh, Happy Jason. To you. Yeah, Jason over at Sci-Fi for Me. You guys can go right to Sci-Fi for Me TV and go right to the YouTube. Uh, before we go, Jason, do you want to plug anything else? Tell them about something else. Um, well, uh, I mean, there's so much. Where do I start? Um, I can I can let people know. Yeah, you know, we do have the we do have the YouTube, but we're also on Odyssey. We're also on Rumble. We're also on Twitch. And I, we have all of these different social media channels, platforms, video platforms, places that uh, that you can connect with us. So uh, I make it a habit of making sure that all of that is out in the wild for people to find us. Uh, so every now and again, we pick up a new subscriber. We pick up a new follower over on socials. So and yes, Death Angel Shadow, we have a Discord. <laughs> He's a, he's our he's our Discord manager. So no, oh, very nice. Yeah, hey, look at that. You, you're bringing him in here tonight. Your team is supportive. That's great. Yeah. And uh, Doc says uh, thanks, Pete. Sub to Sci-Fi for me. Didn't know it existed. There you go. Thank you very much. See, and and a lot of people sit there and say, why don't why don't you have a bigger audience? Why don't people know about you? I was like, you got me. I would I would love to have a bigger audience. Right now we're sitting at 24 our 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 YouTube subscriber count is 2428. You, you know and what I think I would love for that to be 24,000, but it's not. Largely I think what it is is you don't post enough content that gets people pissed off. And, and that's what it is. It, that's exactly what it is. We don't do the drama. We don't lean into that. And, and as go, soon as you do, rage, like, rage. yeah. And I don't yeah, want to don't close do the show, bringing it up again. But yeah, as soon yeah. as it adds, it's like, oh lordy. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's a it's a solid channel, and you guys do a lot of good good stuff over there. So you know, I hope you guys that are out there that are watching either live or later on. Uh, go subscribe if you haven't already. And if you do have something that you want to talk to Jason about, maybe get on the show. Again, approach it in a kind, respectful way, understanding that you are asking uh, the time from this gentleman uh, to give to have you on his show and, and help you out. So always understand that. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for your questions tonight. Really appreciate it. He says the Saturday show is the big news show. Yeah, that's Good Morning Multiverse. That's our two-hour headlines from the week and Very nice. everything. So it's it's a big it's a big to do. All so, right. And you've got an open invitation. Whenever you want to get back on live from the bunker, you just let me know and we'll set it up. Oh, I appreciate it. We'll we'll coordinate something for July. Okay. Yeah, Sounds we'll good. do that. Um, and not on the Saturday show, unfortunately, like I said, but but we'll we'll schedule another day. Um, and I do want to let you guys know at home the Alterna campaign that's going on right now for August. Uh, this has hit its funding goal on Indiegogo, so it's Indiegogo goal has Yay. been hit. But but we're having the campaign run on both the Alterna site and on Indiegogo, so we're at about a seventy six percent overall, which is pretty good we got about uh, a little over i think two and a half weeks or so left 
Um, so if you haven't had a chance yet, go check it out on alternacomics.com slash pre-order. We've got advertising perks up now too. So you can get a full page ad for 25 bucks, an inside back cover for 50, an inside front cover for 75, or a back cover for 100, whatever you might be interested in. If you're a creator out there, it's a really good deal. The best deal in print advertising that you're going to get. Um, but uh, anyway, thank you guys so much. Everybody have a wonderful night. I'm going to be back tomorrow night at 9 o'clock Eastern with Rob Geronimo. He's launching a merchandising campaign for Blood Realm. And we'll see how that goes. He's going to have T-shirts on there and all kinds of other stuff. Uh, but hopefully we'll see you tomorrow night again, uh, 9 o'clock Eastern. And that'll be on Comic Book Radio with me, uh, Peter Semetti here. And uh, thank you for joining me tonight, Jason, at Sci-Fi for Me. Everybody else that's out there, take care. And we will see you tomorrow. Bye, have a great night, everybody. Thank you.